Good afternoon and welcome to another A Push video with Mr. Pate. We're now in review mode. These videos, we're going to try and keep them short and sweet. Hit likely types of comparison topics that could appear on essays. Here we go. Today we're looking at comparison and contrast of the 1920s and 50s. So let's look at these things. The 1920s, women's roles. You have the new woman, flappers, uh, new changes in clothing styles, acceptable behavior, dating practices. Uh, women are getting different types of jobs and shattering all kinds of old uh, Victorian roles. 50s, it's a contrast. We have domestic roles for women. Uh, women, we have kind of a return to terms you should be familiar with. Cult of domesticity, uh, separate spheres, Republican motherhood. These are all older terms saying that a woman's place was in the home. Well, there's kind of a return to this. This is a you know, we saw a carryover from the new woman. By the time you get to World War II, you've got Rosie the Riveter, and you've got women in the armed forces. And women are working in large numbers, but with all the GIs returning from war, uh, women generally, it's kind of societally conformist to get back into uh, domestic roles. Prohibition and disregard for the law. Prohibition is a period where you had a lot of government corruption. Um, you had a lot of, you know, bribes, and people just in general didn't take the law that seriously, so you kind of have some disregard for law. In the 1950s you have a contrast, again, uh, you have a period of great conformity. And yes, there are the Beatniks and Jack Kerouac and some people that are saying, hey, we, we don't agree with everything, but they're a small, quiet voice in a conformist society. Uh, life was built around the cities. People had abandoned rural areas and farm life and had moved in great numbers to the cities in the 20s. The cities were like the economic and cultural hub of society. By the time you get to the 1950s, a lot of people have moved out of the cities. The suburbs are a new thing, and this is kind of the new center of family life. Now, it's not going to be the cultural center of life. That'll still be in inner cities, uh, bigger locations. But suburbia becomes kind of the new focus of, of life, and you see a lot of different things go into that. Um, nativism. Nativism is like a big kind of scare and threat you see the rise of the KKK, you see the rise of um, different immigrant, uh, anti-immigrant groups, you see uh, a big push again with the um, Emergency Quota Act and the Immigration Acts in 1921-1924 to further rest restrict to sharp quotas the amount of people coming from different uh, parts of the world to, to the United States. Um, the scare in the 50s, I guess, would be nuclear threat. We've got duck and cover, and people are building bomb shelters in these new suburban neighborhoods, and that's kind of a new thing that's popping up. Um, in the 1920s, there's really not any civil rights, and that does not mean to diminish Marcus Garvey or W.E.B. Du Bois, the NAACP, uh, different people who were coming out with thoughts and starting to prepare litigation to attack segregation, but you don't see any real advancement during this time period. Consequently, um, by contrast, in the 1950s, you have um, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and the beginning of the nonviolent protest movement with SCLC, Montgomery Bus Boycotts, etc. You have the litigation bearing fruit with Thurgood Marshall. You have Brown versus Board of Education decisions striking down uh, segregated schools and segregation in general. And you also have a challenge to that where Eisenhower has to call in the troops for the Little Rock Nine with Little Rock school integration. So the flare-ups are starting and you're seeing major challenges in different ways by African Americans that lead to kind of their freedom. So these are all contrasts you can kind of draw across. In the middle here, the Venn diagram in red, we have some things that are common. Both periods had a red scare. You had the Palmer Raids, anti-Germanic feelings during World War I, and uh, the Bolshevik Revolution all contribute uh, with this radicalism that's going on in the United States to a red scare in the 1920s and the 1950s. You have HUAC has occurred, and McCarthyism occurs. You've had the Korean War, the Soviets get the A-bomb, Alger Hiss and um, Rosenberg trials, um, and you know communist infiltration in America becomes a big scare. Uh, consumerism and economic prosperity, I'll kind of go over those together. These are both boom time decades, okay? That's an easy uh, comparison to make that's a similarity. Both of these decades, the stock market is going up, the American economy is growing, um, people feel an economic optimism, that consumer confidence is high, and part of that, going hand in hand with that, is the consumerism. Uh, Americans are, in the 1920s are exposed really for the first time to 
a large amount of credit being available for consumer purchases, a large amount of new domestic appliances and inventions coming out. The radio was a new source of entertainment in the 1950s, of course. You have even further domestic uh, things people are trying to buy for their homes, different appliances that have been improved and new ones that have come out, and TV replaces radio as the new form of entertainment. People go into greater and greater amounts of debt to get these things, uh, and there's just this great desire. In the 20s, coming out of World War I, people had saved up some money, and credit became easy, and the stock market was roaring. People felt like they had the money to buy these things. In the 1950s, people had to save during World War II, and now they have money to get these things as well. Teen culture, really the, the idea of a teenager is born, really, you know, in the teens, 19 teens and 20s. And um, so you see the beginnings of a teen culture. It expands. Teens kind of become a central target of marketing um, with their own products. Rock and roll and their own kind of teen culture develop completely. And they even have even more freedom uh, that is the teenager. And the last thing is the car culture. In the 20s, you see really the dawn of affordable cars with the Model T and cars exploding all over the place, many people getting cars. By the time you get to the 1950s, you have the Interstate Highway Act makes it much more easy to travel around the country. Many teenagers have their own cars. Families are getting a second car, sometimes conceivably even a third car, although that's more of a later thing that's gonna come along. But teenagers had access to cars and they had a lot of freedom that went along with that and you kinda of see this car culture develop. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, I guess maybe to give you just a broad overview, uh, Red Scare, Prosperity, these would be, um, in kind of teen and car cultures would be some similarities, new forms of music I guess you could throw in, jazz and rock and roll, um, things that are differences, women's roles and women's, the perception of what women should be doing, conformity, 50s, conformity is a huge theme, 20s you have kind of this uh, roaring 20s that's smashing old things and it's changing the norms. Uh, nativism versus nuclear threat and the dawn of the civil rights movement is another uh, new change. That's all the time we have for today. Stay classy, Sam Barlow.